В современном мире стартапы с уникальными... I want to change the world with own ideas. Our today's uh, guest, global investor, the founder and general director of our crowd, Jonathan Medved, he will help us to understand how to make innovation startups our dreams. Welcome to our SF University. Uh, good day, dear participants. Uh, welcome to the third Nobel Fest. Uh, thank you for your attention and participation. I hope that participation in the session will be use, useful uh, to you to the process of future research work. I believe uh, that the main purpose of the conference uh, is to, to exchange best practice and uh, knowledge in the field of economics and uh, management. Uh, I hope that the results uh, obtained will be useful to all participants uh, and uh, first of all, to the economical science of Kazakhstan. And uh, the proposed recommendation uh, will um, really find uh, the application in practice. Uh, okay, uh, the topic of today's uh, section is the future today, skills of the 21st uh, century. Let me introduce the speaker. Jonathan uh, Medved is uh, founder and general director of our crowd company. Uh, key discussion points, uh, how to build an innovative dream startup, uh, the basic of uh, what you need to create a successful startup, and uh, how to get your message across uh, to investors, uh, the importance of accelerated programs, uh, building your dream team, and the art of business planning and marketing. Uh, Mr. Johnson, please, you are welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. I'm going to share some slides with you. And I want to, uh, again, uh, thank you for having me here uh, virtually. I'm speaking to you from Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, Israel, as you know, is the startup nation. We have more startups per capita than anywhere. The uh, situation here is booming. And what I want to do is to uh, address this topic of uh, how to build your dream startup with a little bit of my own personal story in terms of our crowd and how it works. And I'll make reference to some of the uh, critical skills and elements that you must address to do that in your own situation. So first, I want to start with some news that happened yesterday uh, to our crowd. We, we just announced that uh, SoftBank, which is one of the, uh, it is the world's largest and biggest tech uh, investor, has just invested in our crowd, which we're very, very proud of. And I was all over the media and the TV yesterday talking about it. Uh, what's interesting about this relationship with SoftBank is that it's not just an investment, it's a partnership. And we have signed a collaboration and cooperation agreement and that's your first lesson, which is you can't build a startup on your own. Obviously, people understand that they must, you know, create their dream team, if you will, or close to it. But you've also got to get partners. And it's not just investors with money, but it's people who will help you. And we're delighted to have people like SoftBank as part of our journey. Now, if you look at how we've developed our crowd over time, we started our funding with a number of angels and small investor groups. Uh, obviously, raising money for your company is critical in the very early stages. If you can't raise money, you're going to have a hard time of building a company. Uh, and you start to raise money from what are called angel capital investors or family members or small investor groups. And you should raise uh, as much as you can but get started and start raising. It's really critical to bring on the first investor. What you should remember is that your investor is not a bank. Your investor is your partner. And you're going to have to live with them for the lifetime of the startup. And therefore, you should make sure that you're compatible. We have been very, very fortunate in having huge partnerships and very exciting investors with us 
the whole way. And whether it's people like UOB uh, from uh, Singapore or Stiefel from the United States or Oryx and now SoftBank from Japan, we believe in building global partnerships because today's startups must be mini multinationals. You can't build a big startup trying to be the king of Almaty. Okay, it's not going to work. You've got to think globally. Nobody in my country wants to be the king of Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv and Almaty are both beautiful cities. But if you don't have a global viewpoint and bring on global partners, global investors, you're going to have a tough time building a startup. Now, venture capital, the good news is booming worldwide. Everybody who's got smart money wants to put money into venture capital and to back startups. This is a look at the Yale Endowment, which is perhaps the leading you know, asset allocator. Uh, David Swenson, who ran uh, for many decades this endowment, had a notion that the closer you are to what's called permanent capital, money that you can keep working for you over long periods of time, the more you should embrace illiquidity, the more you should put money into alternative asset classes that are not uh, liquid. So if you look at the Yale Endowment, they have grown their commitment to venture capital from 13% of assets in 2014 to 23% plus in 2021. And notice how much they have in domestic U.S. equities. You know, U.S. equities have been great over this period, but they have only 2.8% committed there because they believe that this uh, 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 long-term capital outlook mandates the taking of real controlled and mitigated risk in the area of venture capital. Now, the world has been listening. And if you look at what's going on with venture capital, this year, it looks like it's going to be something like 600 billion. We're going to double the asset class worldwide. So if you were a startup person thinking about your startup and trying to figure out when to time it, right? When you should you start working? The answer is now. Right now, never been better. There's a bull market in venture capital. If you ever were thinking about going ahead and building a startup, you should be doing it today. Now, in my country, the boom is well underway. Last year, there was about $10 billion invested in Israeli venture capital. People from all over the world, including Kazakhstan, but not enough from Kazakhstan. And now, this year, the number will be somewhere about 22 or 24 billion. The nine month figure was almost $18 billion and it's just growing dramatically. The most important part of the market that's growing is the unicorn element, so much so that now there are 72 unicorns in Israel. Israel is now regarded by the people in the World Economic Forum as the world's most innovative country. We're number one in the growth of innovative companies, number one in R&D expenditures, number one in entrepreneurial culture, number one in terms of attitudes towards entrepreneurial risk. And this is amazing for a small country. What we are proving in Israel is you don't have to be a huge superpower like the US or China or Russia to play a role in innovation. Small countries like Israel and Kazakhstan, Azerbaijan, Uzbekistan, we can do it too. It's simply a matter of courage, of passion, and of building an ecosystem that includes a variety of elements where we can all work together to build these companies. So I mentioned the 72 unicorn element. It's rather uh, important. In Israel, this means that there are 72 companies that are now valued at over a billion dollars, but are not yet public. In the first six months of this year, there were 48 IPOs so far. Now, the ecosystem in Israel, at the heart of it, are the thousands of entrepreneurs 
who are coming up with new ideas and new companies. We're pretty close to about 10,000 startups in our little country of less than 10 million. Okay, that's basically a lot of startups. You can go outside and throw a rock and you'll hit a startup entrepreneur. The, these startup people come, many of them, from the technology units in our army, the Israel Defense Forces. The IDF is a place where people learn all kinds of cybersecurity, imaging, big data, communications, semiconductors. It becomes the sort of real world laboratory for university skills. So it's not just about formal academic skills, but it's about real world problem solving, where people's lives are on the line, where you've got to get the job done and done right. That's where our entrepreneurs come from. Now, they meet up with uh, thousands of angel investors who are investors who want to put the first money in. They then meet up with many, many dozens of venture capital funds that uh, probably over 100 today in the domestic market, but more importantly is the entire world is investing. Of that 20 some billion invested, over 80% this year will come from abroad. And then they, uh, many of them go to incubators or accelerators. They're uh, run by many smart people and smart companies. And then they meet uh, as they get bigger and become unicorns, private equity or growth equity funds, and ultimately the multinationals, almost 400 of them who are in the country play a critical role, both in terms of partnering and, and becoming uh, a channel to market and joint development, but more importantly, in terms of potential acquisition after initial investment, where many of these huge companies are a exit vehicle. So a company like Intel has already invested $50, billion in Israel and consistently buys companies all the time as it also develops its uh, both ability to build uh, semiconductor chips and design them in Israel. That's really the flagship. Now, it's very important in addition to having a uh, access to capital and be part of a great ecosystem. I think those are two critical sort of prerequisites for building a, a good startup. The third is to be part of a big wave, to catch the zeitgeist right, to figure out where the market is going to grow and not just grow with single digit kinds of growth, but strong double digit, what we call CAGR, you know, compound annual growth rate. And so the trend, for example, that our crowd has jumped on is the democratization of investment, especially in venture capital. That venture capital boom that I showed you is mostly fueled by large institutions, by sovereign wealth funds, by pension funds, by big banks and insurance companies, by endowments. The problem has been that until now, even regular old rich people, people with significant assets, some of them billionaires, can't get into venture capital. If you're a wealthy person in Almaty and you want to invest in a Silicon Valley or Israeli startup, you can't pick up the phone and call your bank, even if your bank is Goldman Sachs or Morgan Stanley. They don't have the access to the private market. So this is a very, very big wave now where people all around the world are saying, we want to get in to the next private company. And in fact, the former head of the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, Jay Clayton, he said that if the growth opportunities have shifted to a substantial extent into our private markets and ordinary investors don't have access, that's not good. And so both the regulators as well as the, the investors themselves are all moving towards this democratization. So our crowd has, has jumped on this. We started about eight years ago. Uh, we're now in hyper growth. It turns out that we're managing about $2 billion of assets. 
uh, we have funded, you know, close to 300 companies and 30 funds. We're an online venture capital platform, which I'll show you uh, perhaps in a demo at the end of my slides. And we're growing very fast. Uh, last year in 2020, we added 25,000 investors. This year, so far in nine months, we've added 75,000 new investors. That's 300% growth. And our investments uh, this year will be about $500 million, which uh, new money, which is again about 100% growth over last year. Our uh, portfolio includes companies literally in every area of technology. We allow you to go to our website, rcrowd.com, and to invest in semiconductors, in mobility, in ag tech, in fintech, in cybersecurity, in drones, in medical cannabis, you name it, you can invest in a great startup. The minimum is $10,000. And you can also invest in a fund for $50,000. Now, what we do is that we actually choose the companies ourselves. You can't just come to our crowd and pay us money. We don't want your money as an entrepreneur. We don't take money from the companies. We choose the companies like a venture capital fund. Okay, we see about 200 new companies every month. We'll select about 20 to do what's called a deep dive. And then within that group of 20, two or three will then be selected, negotiated, and invested where we invest our own capital. And then we invite the rest of the crowd to join us. We invest alongside the world's leading venture capital funds and the world's leading angels and multinational corporations. And we look for a variety of key factors in our investments uh, in order to make sure that we are on the right track. First of all, what we look for in a startup is a great team. You know, they've once said that in the restaurant business, there are three things that are very important. Location, 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 okay? In the investment business, in venture capital, there are three things, team, team, team. And you must start building the team from day one before you have raised money. Because if you cannot convince people that your vision is right, that the opportunity is big, and that you can lead them to success, then you're not going to be able to persuade investors. Investors want to see that you've already assembled a team. We will almost never invest in a single entrepreneur company. If a solo entrepreneur comes to us and says, here's my idea, I send them back and say, come back when you have a team. And they look at you and say, wait a minute, I don't have money to hire a team. And I say, big deal. If you cannot persuade the people of the team to work at night, to work on the weekend, to you know, put in extra hours and to sacrifice and to build together with you, then you're not going to raise money from me or somebody else. The next criteria we look for is a large addressable market, something which you can really create huge value and is going to grow enormously. So, and then we are in particular investors who like deep technology. We don't just like a business model innovation. We like a technology innovation. We also look for companies that have traction, that are making progress on their own, and we can accelerate that. We are price sensitive. We don't like pay crazy valuations. And multiple, uh, the, perhaps the most important element is can we add value? It's critical as an investor today to be an activist to actually provide help to the companies, to help them raise more money, to help them further build the team, to help them meet customers, to help them get into the media, to help them find partners, and to help them ultimately get to an exit. And if people, for example, say, no, I don't want any help. I, I, I really don't care for your advice. Then we're not interested in investing. 
We want to be involved. We don't want to run the company, God forbid, but we want to be active investors. Now, uh, I've been fortunate to have built a great team at our crowd that consists by and large of people who I have known, loved, and worked with for uh, actually decades. If you look at this part of my management team, and it's pretty much true, of these nine people, seven of them are people I've known for 20 years or have worked with in one or more companies before. Jeff, who's my head of product, I've worked in three companies with of my own. Alan, I was a, a backer of his uh, startup, which was successfully sold. Alec, who was the vice chairman of the international bank, Jefferies, has been a good friend for 20 years. Andy, who was a, a head of Roberts and Stevens and CIBC, been a good friend for 20 years. Josh was my right-hand man in my last company, Vringo, which I took public in New York. Robbie, I've known for 20 years and our kids are friends. It's And of course, even the two who are new are people I feel now very connected to. And we've been on this journey for eight years. So build a great team. And also make sure that whatever you're doing, you are part of the digital transformation, which is sweeping over the world. What we've done with our crowd is to create a digital platform that allows you to analyze these companies. And let me see if I can actually uh, get uh, this, uh, uh, this platform to demonstrate this to you now in just a few quick seconds. We'll hope that that will work. We're gonna pull up something which often people don't do, which is a live demo, but I believe in live demos. And I like taking risks. So can you see this now? I'm assuming, uh, Mr. Chairman, we can see my slides. Can we see this demo? Okay, I'm assuming that we can, if someone's not telling me. So basically what we have here is the R Crowd site. And you'll see that we have many, many investment opportunities, which we bring to our, uh, uh, to our members. If you sign up, you get a chance to, uh, to fund these companies. And if you look at companies like BioLumic, this is a company that's using ultraviolet light to uh, essentially improve the performance of plants and seeds by exposing plants and seedlings to ultraviolet radiation, it turns out that you can increase yields by 20 or 25%. You can do this for cannabis, for soy, for strawberries. It's a game-changing technology. It comes from New Zealand. We're a, uh, uh, again, a, mul you know, a multinational global platform. We give you information about the CEO, where he comes from, we tell you why we are investing in Biolumic, and then we give you their presentation. So it's as though now you were in their, you know, they were in your boardroom or in your office or in your living room telling you about this company. You can see all of their, you know, uh, performance data and whatnot. We then give you our own analysis of this company, how it works. So there are literally are, you know, pages and pages, including footnotes developed by our team of uh, analysts of why we're investing. We use this material in our own investment committee to make decisions. And again, tons of footnotes. Then ultimately, we tell you what the terms are. You'll find out that this is a company that is raising 15 million. We're putting 3 million in what the valuation is, in this case, 37. And then we invite you to a webinar where you can join the management of the company and literally ask them questions in real time. And we do this for all of the opportunities that we are listing on the site. And you'll notice that there are funds, there are companies like Sanitize, which is a company which is making a nose spray that kills the COVID virus. 
And literally, you know, you can uh, hear about this. And then if you want to actually invest in this company, you simply go to the invest button, okay, right here. You click it, it's live. I've already invested, so I'm not going to, but it's that easy. That's the way that we built uh, this platform. So now I'm gonna go back to my uh, slides, if you will, and uh, continue sharing them. So that worked. So that's the site, and you should definitely uh, go after this uh, presentation to rcrowd.com and uh, register and, and take a look at our investments. Just a few final comments, and then I'll take your questions and make this more interactive. We're now, as I said, a global platform with uh, now 50% of our deals outside of Israel, 50% inside. We'd love to make our first investment in Kazakhstan. And we have signed recently a deal with Azerbaijan. We've had actually 50 exits. Luckily, we've been investors in companies like Beyond Meat, which is the world leader in plant-based uh, meat alternatives, Lemonade, which is a uh, very, very exciting insurance company. Uh, we were investors in Jump, which was acquired by Uber, so major companies around the world are being backed by our crowd today. Our performance is doing great in terms of IRR. Most recent uh, gross IRR is 48% on realizations and a moik of, uh, or an overall uh, improvement in uh, investment portfolio of 2.4. Uh, our funds such as OC50, which give you 50 different companies are looking very, very strong in terms of their performance. Lots of exits uh, in a uh, company, uh, in a fund that has 50 different companies. Again, seven realized exits, five more underway, great portfolio. And we're very proud of our most recent uh, signing just a couple of months ago with uh, the Azerbaijan Investment Corporation. Uh, of a big memorandum of understanding to joint invest, linking Tel Aviv and Baku. And we hope to do the same with Almaty and Kazakhstan and in uh, Tashkent and Uzbekistan. We're very interested in Central Asia. And we'd love to invite everybody who's listening to our annual summit. It will be May 25th, 2022, in just a few months. We'll be back in Jerusalem. We'll be outside in the beautiful weather of May and look forward to inviting the world. Last time we had 23,000 people uh, and it's free. You just have to figure out how to get to Jerusalem. We'll see you there. So just a couple of the areas where we're investing. We're investing heavily in cybersecurity. We believe this is an incredible area. We're investing in medical devices, anti-cancer, we're investing in digital health, whether it's VR or AI for diagnostics, we're investing in things that are saving the planet, such as H2 Pro, which we just launched, which is a green hydrogen company, or Blue Green, which is cleaning up waterways that are attacked by toxic algal blooms. We're investing in energy, companies like Empress, who have the next generation grid control, which would be very interesting to many Kazakh energy companies, companies like Dandelion, who are doing next generation geothermal for houses in the US, or Inverid, which is saving tons of energy and improving air quality inside buildings. We're very committed to food tech. Again, Beyond Meat was one of our investments, Ripple Foods, making a new uh, milk substitute for Blue Nalu, which is growing uh, next generation uh, fish in cellular aquaculture. We're very committed to uh, agritech. Companies like SIO that have the world's smallest uh, spectrometer for real-time measurement in the field. Companies like Tevel who are picking fruit automatically with drones or co companies like Plenty, which is the world leader in vertical agriculture where we're co-invested with SoftBank. We're very committed to mobility. Companies like Ride Vision that help you uh, save your life if you're on a motorcycle. Auto Brains, 
who are doing the next generation autonomous driving, or SkyTran, who are doing maglev pod trans, uh, transport inside cities, now Reliance from India is the largest shareholder. We're committed to fintech, companies like Daily Pay, giving everybody access to their monthly pay daily. Biocatch, which does authentication based on behavioral biometrics, or we mentioned Lemonade in the insurance space. So with that, I'm gonna stop and take your questions. Mr. Chairman, I would love to hear from the audience. Uh, okay, uh, Mr. Jonathan, very interesting presentation and information. Uh, an interesting question has uh, come to us. Uh, first, uh, I own startup in Kazakhstan. Uh, can I apply for funding at our, our crowd? Absolutely. We welcome it. You can uh, go to the website and there is a process for you to apply. But you can also... Uh, you know, send an email to me at john at our crowd, j-o-n at our crowd .com. I would be delighted to hear from you. We are looking for investments in Kazakhstan. So please do try to uh, join our platform, join as an investor, join as an entrepreneur, but help us build a global entrepreneurial community. We are excited to hear from you. Good. Uh, next question uh, from audience. Uh, uh, what if I don't have 10,000 10, uh, US dollars uh, to invest? Uh, what strategy do you suggest uh, to acquire capital? So uh, it's a very good question. The reason that we uh, keep our minimum now at $10,000 uh, is because of the regulations in many parts of the world that restrict this kind of high risk but high reward investment to what are called accredited or qualified investors. We expect that in the not too distant future, we will create public uh, vehicles that will allow you to buy private startups in funds which are uh, available to the public. If you look at the announcement just this week of Sequoia Capital, they seem to be doing much the same thing. We, we still don't have a lot of information about it, but it was a very, very important announcement. And I hope that soon people like yourself will be able to invest in these kinds of companies, even if it's $100 or $500. In order to make the world fair in terms of a, uh, a flat and easy, we must democratize. But at the moment, we are limited to people with $10,000. Speak to your parents, speak to your friends, uh, go get a job in an investment bank and figure out how to get the capital. And then you can join us. In the future, we hope the minimums will be lower. Good. Uh, second question, how long does it usually take any startup to find funding? That's a really great question. Sometimes it takes forever and they don't succeed. Sometimes it takes a week and then most of them it takes between that. But you know, realistically to raise money takes several months. It's not something that for most uh, companies or, or entrepreneurs you can get it uh, accomplished in days or weeks. It takes months and uh, the reason is because you have to find a chemistry with your investors. You have to find people who will understand your business. You have to give them time to call your customers to uh, do technology and market research. But I'll tell you that what's happening now in the market is that this time is compressing. Because the market is so dynamic and has so much velocity, there are some people who are making investments in one week or two weeks or three weeks, literally. Typically, they are in later stage companies, companies that have already demonstrated an enormous growth and fast growth. And you can <laughs> see situations, and we've seen it with some of our companies, where a big investor will come and literally invest money after two weeks or three weeks of meeting the company. And that's a great thing, and, and we like that very much. 
The problem is that in the earliest stages, unless again, you are a successful entrepreneur, a serial entrepreneur who has a, a, a proven track record, it's gonna take you months to raise money in most cases. Uh, good, good. Thank you very much, Mr. Jonathan. On behalf of the leadership of the university, I would like to thank all the participants of, of the conference. Uh, also, on my own behalf, I want to thank all the members of the organization uh, committee for their well-coordinated and uh, productive uh, work, which give a significant and high-quality result. And I'm sure that the discussion of uh, innovative ideas uh, has made a significant contribution, not only to increasing the, increasing the efficiency of modern vocational education, uh, to the development of the scientific research. I wish you all creative success. Uh, we are waiting for you at the next uh, conference in our ways of university. Thank you, Mr. Jonathan. Thank you very much, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in Jerusalem, May 25th at our summit. Shalom from Israel.